Every niche out there has caveats that only the most experienced know about. The RC hobby at the surface might seem pretty innocent. After all, they are just toys, right? The truth is a little bit more compelling than that. In this video, we're going to look at everything from common misconceptions the industry is feeding you, all the way through exposing just how little testing goes into our dangerous aircraft and their systems. Number one, it's easy. Manufacturers work hard to promote the hobby as a relaxing way to spend an afternoon at the park that's easy to jump into thanks to foolproof electronic power systems and self-leveling tech like SAFE. Oh my, I'm gonna crash. People used to be intimidated by picking out parts, putting them into an airplane, or building it from a kit like a caveman, learning from an old guy in a funny hat at an expensive RC club, and then doing it all over again when they wreck it. But even with all the modern conveniences out there, this is still a challenging hobby, and that's why it's fun and rewarding. Nailing a solo flight with an Aeroscout, even with safe on, really is more of an achievement than you might think if you just watch RC channels like ours. Number two, you need to spend a lot of money. You might see videos of 15,000 plus dollar jets, big 3D gassers, or even composite gliders alongside their expensive transmitters and think that this is a cost prohibitive hobby. The reality is, you wind up spending as much money as you want to. Don't ask me to go out, cause, cause there's, there's no money in my account. I'm broke. You can get started for a couple hundred bucks in some foam, OG flight test style, and have fun for years. But if we weren't out making it rain at our favorite retailers, lots of our favorite planes wouldn't be around. A common misconception about this hobby is that money equals skill. It usually works the other way around. Oh man! But we've already touched on that in our 10 RC pilots you'll meet video. What you really need is some D dedication. If you're dedicated to being patient and hunting around Craigslist, Facebook, or other buy and sell groups, you can actually get started in this hobby for pretty cheap. And having a bunch of beater planes in this hobby will get you a lot further than the latest gimmick from Horizon. Treat this hobby like what it is, a hobby, not a financial ruin. Number three, higher C ratings are better. Higher C batteries can put out more current than low C batteries, so higher is better, right? It would be if most manufacturers didn't straight up lie about them. We released a full video going in depth on this scam that battery manufacturers are running, which you can find in the description below. In short, 75C batteries from company A will probably put out more current than 30C batteries also from company A, but not necessarily more than 30C batteries from company B. However, customers buy the ones with the bigger number, so manufacturers pretty much have to lie to stay in business. And sometimes, high C batteries that cost a lot more perform worse than cheap batteries. Also, higher C batteries weigh more than low C batteries, so if you're flying with more than you need, you're really just carrying dead weight and spending more money. Number four, reviews. Yes, we are aware that we make reviews. You may have noticed that in general, positive comments and RC reviews on YouTube and even in magazines grossly outnumber the negative ones. With a few exceptions, it's been this way for quite a long time, and that's because a lot of manufacturers usually don't play fair, and the rest of us just put up with it. If someone gets a free airplane to review, maybe even before customers, and they say something the manufacturer doesn't agree with, they probably won't get another one later. Also, some of it is a carryover from print magazines who didn't want to upset their advertisers. This has created a status quo where the Venn diagram of product review and advertisement is not exactly two circles. As a result, many pilots wind up reading Facebook or RC Group's threads to find out how good a product really is. Number 5. Servo Torque Ratings Simply put, servo torque is the amount of twisting force a servo can put out. If you've ever had to pick out servos for a project, especially a larger one, you probably look for servos with the most torque you could get for the money. Unfortunately, the story here is very similar to C ratings. Many servos don't put out close to their advertised torque, and since most people never test them, they can get away with it. One manufacturer takes a theoretical servo torque on paper, the torque it takes to backdrive the servo, and the actual torque it can put out, which is a number you care about, and averages all those to make a more impressive, but wrong, number. Number six, products are well tested and safe when they hit the market. Most manufacturers complete some level of testing during development of new radio systems, airplanes, and other products, but the reality is that the people who do most of the testing are the customers. The high-tech Aurora 9 radio system had a bug that caused receivers to hard lock, and the only way to recover was to power cycle them, and the cause was unknown. They did work on a firmware update for it, but continued to sell it for a long time without a known fix. The Futaba R701 8SB receiver was sold for big expensive RC planes with lots of servos. And ironically, if you plugged a bunch of high torque servos into it, it would overheat and shut off. Both of these led to some crashes of big expensive airplanes.
These products have been discontinued, but if they had been well tested, they would never have hit the market with these issues to begin with. Also, foam planes usually have expensive molds that can't really be changed, so if a design comes out with the wrong wing incidence or a weak landing gear mount, they'll keep making them until the tooling wears out and maybe fix it on the next design. So while it can be fun to try new things, learning from other people's mistakes is an easy way to lessen your frustrations in this hobby. Number 7. Gyros and Stabilization are a big deal Many people enjoy flying with gyros, and self-leveling stuff like SAFE can make flying an easier thing to understand for absolute beginners. More and more aircraft these days come with these pre-installed out of the factory. As a result though, more and more pilots are intimidated about turning these aids off or buying an airplane without them. The reality is that there are lots of designs out there that fly better with no stabilization than other designs that have all the nannies turned on. Flying with just a simple receiver can be a very rewarding experience that gives you a closer connection to the model in the air, and when you decide to wean yourself of gyro juice from Horizon's leathery teat, you'll find a ton of new possibilities for fun things to fly. Number 8. You gotta buy a new airplane. Anybody who bought a timber to replace their fun cub knows that this is flat out wrong. That new design doesn't always fly better. And if your goal is to fly better, spending your time and money playing airplane Pokemon will make things a lot harder to progress than sticking with one you know. This one ties back into one of our first points. You don't need the newest and best thing to have a good time in this hobby, nor will it make you a better pilot. What will make you a better pilot is flying a plane that really shouldn't be flying, such as a plane that has a wing cube loading through the roof, aka a lead sled or flying coffin. The weird tendencies you learn to correct for with it one day might save your butt when you have a real-life emergency with your beautiful giant-scale P-47. Number 9. Bent foam is a sign you're a bad pilot. Well, okay. Sometimes this one can be true if we're being honest. If you watch Joe fly his giant 3D plane into the pits twice in a row, there's a good chance he'll do it a third time. Fool me twice, right? But for the vast majority of pilots, there's no reason to be embarrassed showing up to the field with an ugly duckling. The reality is that we all crash, and if anything, it shows you're getting outside your comfort zone and trying to improve. There's no reason that you need to be three mistakes high either, because sometimes in order to get comfortable flying low, you just have to fly low. Bonus, if you shame anyone for the way their plane looks, you're deeply insecure, and we hope you get rear-ended on the way to the field next time, Oh, son of a and your balsa planes shatter harder than your fragile ego. Number 10. If it doesn't look like it can fly, it won't. This feeds into a stereotype and our 10 pilots you'll meet about the armchair engineer who comes up to your beautiful, albeit dusty, scratch build and verbally tears it apart, stating that there's no way it'll fly. Generally speaking, with enough thrust, a proper center of gravity, and some prayers, pretty much anything can fly. The channel John Woodfield RC Gliders has proven this time and time again. If you haven't seen his channel, we highly recommend checking it out. Either way, our main point is to brush aside people's comments at the field on your scratch build because it probably will fly. It's just a matter of for how long. At the end of the day, there's not much us hobbyists can do about the points we mentioned in this video except to stay educated on them and to not fall into the traps and lies that are being sent our way. Huge thanks to our friend Cody for helping us write the majority of this video. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see some serious changes in the industry and maybe even hit subscribe if you're feeling generous. Happy landings and bounce one on for us. We'll catch you next week with a new upload.